Hi, hi, Genki Call here with your Soul Forge offerings for the week of April 15th, 2024. There are two things in the Soul Forge that you absolutely must have this week if you don't have them yet. Mostly mess stuff in here, but, but, ah, oh, we have High King Iron Gut. Now, I have a Mythic Spotlight on High King Iron Gut. And um, I will link that in at the end, explain all about how he works, but I will go over what he does briefly. Dum -da -da. High King Iron Gut's spell is, the damage it does is very small. It does a little bit of damage to an enemy, but it has a chance to devour equal to his attack. And he gets an extra turn unless he is frozen he gets an extra turn, period. And uh, the attack, so right now it looks like I have a 61% chance to devour. Now you put this in a delve environment and this bumps way up. You just put him on a team and this is going to bump up. You put him in a delving environment, it is a fantastic way to get those level 500 delves done. Um, and there are plenty of ways that you can boost his attack with other troops as well so he is fantastic and he absolutely will devour unless they're they are immune in a delve environment there is nothing in the underworld that is immune to being cursed and if you curse them or you stun them they are no longer immune to um they're no longer immune to being devoured. So he absolutely will devour as long as you have something to curse or stun. Like the dwarves are generally immune to that kind of thing. So, yeah. And, you know, I'd, I generally don't pay any attention to the traits. He's just so good for delving. And even if you are lower level and he has a really low attack, like I said, there are ways to boost that and use it even for PvP. So... Anyway, this is a must-must-have if you're going to be doing delving, if you want to do those high-level delves. He is amazing. As far as the other mythics that go in here or and um, legendaries, they're okay. The only thing, uh, King, King Selenus is good uh, because he gives a 50% wild folks, uh, sorry, 50% mana start to wild folk allies. He does splash damage, which is okay. And he burns, but mostly it's for this 50% mana start. And of course, if you need a another legendary for your power level at Pan's Vale. Um, Archdiva and Archduke. Oh, that's funny. They're both in here at the same time. That is so funny. Archdiva's good. Choose an ally. Give them attack, life, and armor. This guy can be used with High King Iron Gut. I have seen teams that do that and fill their mana can be cast only one time but it is a big boost of attack life and armor so again in a delve environment it's going to be even higher so he also barriers and blesses a random ally when matching four plus gems so even if he's used his spell or or never even casts you've got this barrier and bless which is really powerful next uh the archduke now, the Archduke and the, what is it, Consort of Darkness do basically the same thing. They have a chance to kill, insta-kill, based off of their magic. So, um, your magic is right here, this number right here. So, for me, not on a team, there's only a 39% chance to insta-kill them. However, every single turn, you're gaining three magic. And that's what makes this troop way better than Consort of Darkness, because... You're getting extra magic, extra chances to insta-kill every single turn. You have a chance to reflect skull damage, and if you have something to boost his magic, say you've got Empress on the team, or you've got the Emperor on the team. Different ways to boost the magic, and at some point he's going to have a 100% chance to insta-kill. It's just a matter of how long it's going to take you, and if you're willing to wait that long. But, um, again... Underworlds, nice strong chance, and I don't think there's anything in the underworld that is immune to insta kill. Mm, I don't think there is, right offhand. But still, cursor stun gonna take care of that. Uh, 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 uh. 
let's see, Colossus, this was just available with, uh, when we were at Hellcrag with your event keys. If you missed it, it's in here, again, if you need it for your power level, but I would recommend saving your diamonds for something you really, really want, unless you just have to have it for your power level, but power level at Hellcrag is capped right now. It can only go so high because there aren't enough troops to get it up really high, so I wouldn't recommend crafting this guy, but that is my personal opinion. He does have skull damage reduction by 50% and a 50% chance to create a good gargoyle gem at the start of every turn. Now, the other thing that is very important this week that you absolutely must have if you don't have it yet is at the bottom of this list, and it is mm -mm -mm -mm, the Dread Archibus. Now, what's so important about this? I don't even know what it does. Uh, damage to an enemy boosted by booty gems and explode four gems. Great. That's not why you need to have it. If you do not have this yet, it is required for the Ruby Macaque. And the Ruby Macaque is one of the most powerful... Um, it's one of the most powerful weapons that you can get in the game. It does damage to all enemies. Creates booty gems and explodes five gems. So you're going to get lots of gold. You're going to get a chance to... Um, you're going to get a chance to loop. And it's just a really awesome weapon that I think everybody in the game needs to have. So if you want to craft the Ruby Macaque any time in the next year, definitely grab this while we're here because it's no telling when we're going to be back in Dragon's Claw. So Dread Archibus, now we can go over the other things that we have available here. Uh, explosion, oh, the explosion. <laughs> Explode four gems of a chosen color, heal life, it's very, very weak, but if you need a weapon, if you need more weapons to get your power level up, I must have all of the things because I don't want to get weapon blocked ever. There'll be a video on that, if I can remember, in the last 15 seconds that'll pop up about why you really don't want to get weapon blocked. Uh, next up, let's see, the mystery egg. This one is going to create red and yellow gems and then summon either a dragon egg or a fell dragon egg. And it will bless your hero when you cast this. Next, we've got doo -doo -doo, the volcanic shield. This is going to give armor to an ally. If the ally uses red mana, give double armor. And if the enemy has a boss, explode all red gems. And what that means is that if they have, well, they used to have a red border. I guess nowadays they'll have red stars here. And so that it would be troops like Tarask, Zulgoth, um, the, the gem dragons are bosses. And um, uh, Enrage Kurandara is a boss. So any of those, anything with the red stars, it will uh, explode all red gems as well. Next up, the Mace of Claws. I recommend this one. I do like this, you know, depending on how many diamonds you have. But uh, the Mace of Claws, I like this for an all-dragon team. It is going to do damage to an enemy boosted by dragon allies. Creates a mix of six red and purple gems. Lots of red and purple for, I'm thinking specifically of the dragon soul who blows up the board. Um... But yeah, it, it's really fun to use on an all-dragon team. Sometimes I like to use it in, an, in the underworld. Um, but is it an absolute must-have? No. Ruby Bacac, absolutely must-have. This is, you know, it's good. I do like it, but how often do we use an all-dragon team, really? Realistically. Here's one of the cheapo 70 dim uh, five diamond ones. This is going to remove all red gems. Damage to an enemy boosted by the gems removed. If the enemy's from Dragon's Claw, the battle's in... Dragon's Claw, deal double damage. It's okay. I mean, it's a 75 diamond cheapo one. Definitely, if you can afford it and you can't afford anything else, don't get weapon blocked. More on that at the end. The Doom Focus, expensive. Very expensive. Um, this is one of the previous Doomed weapons for Dragon's Claw and you know, it's it's okay. It's a yellow weapon that creates red gems. So, 
it's not particularly useful. It's one of those things you want to get only if you are end game, in my opinion, that you'd only get if you're end game and just have to have every single thing. Dragon Tails is going to do damage to an enemy boosted by Dragon's Claw allies. Again, create a mix of red and purple gems for each Dragon's Claw ally. Now, the difference between this one and this is literally, uh, not literally, this is specifically Dragon's Claw, whereas the Mace of Claws is just for Dragon allies. So, this one is going to be more useful at the end of the day, in my opinion, because, yeah, I just, anyway... Moving on, moving on, uh, the Wings of Destruction, Explodey Weapons, I love my Explodey Weapons, Explode 45 Purple Gems, well, I'm sorry, your magic plus one, Explode Purple Gems, random status effect to Dragon Allies and summon a Dragon Troop, and it does not fe feed back into itself, but it's an exploding weapon, which means that you're going to get back some of your mana, um, but yeah, I have to have all the splody weapons. I love them so much. And next we have the Scaled Blade. I think this is the last one in here. No, well, it's almost the last one. Don't craft the Doom Spear, folks. If you're going to do... Hold on. We're, uh, I'll come back to the Scaled Blade. If you are doing the Tower of Doom event, get this in the Tower of Doom event shop for your gems instead of... Uh, sorry, instead of spending your hard-earned diamonds on it. This is a lot of diamonds for something you can get for gems for an event you're going to be doing anyway if you're in a guild. But this is a very useful weapon as far as the dooms go because it's going to create a bunch of yellow gems. And, you know, on an all-yellow team for Guild Wars, for, uh, for the Tower of Doom event, it's going to be very, very useful. So, um, definitely get this if you're doing the Tower of Doom, but do it with your gems. Alright, the last thing we have here is the Scaled Blade, and this one does damage to an enemy boosted by red allies and dragon allies, an extra three damage for each. So, if you have all red allies, this is use red, it does use red. So, if you have all red allies, that'll be an extra 12 damage to each, and or to the enemy, and then if they're all dragons as well, that's another plus 12. So you can hit them pretty hard, but it only hits one enemy. So I really like my AoE. <laughs> I really like hitting all enemies at once and just decimating my enemies very, very quickly. That's just the way I like to play. But anyway, that is it for our uh, Soul Forge video for the week. I hope you enjoyed it. Check out the videos popping up on the screen now if you're so inclined. Have a wonderful day or night, wherever you may be, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye!